Great, now let's get started. We'll first meet with candidate Alicia Purdy, followed by Valerie South. So Alicia, I will pass it off to you. Hi everybody, thank you for allowing me to have a discussion with you today. I'm really excited to speak with you all. My name is Alicia Purdy. I am a white female. I have very short red hair. I am sitting in a room. I have a, a cat who has recently jumped in here because I forgot to close the door. So I have a cat sitting next to me and I am wearing a turquoise um, Indian top called a kurta and some silver jewelry that my mom gave me a pair of earrings with a little bit of a zebra print on them and fun fact about me I have a tattoo on my neck so I'll introduce myself to you and um, also let you know I have a fiddle leaf fig plant in the background um, so my name is Alicia Purdy and my background is in journalism. I'm a journalist. I have a master's degree in journalism. And my background in journalism has been in politics and government and business. This is my first time running for office, although I have always wanted to run for office. And I encourage everybody to run for office. I think it's a really worthy endeavor. And if you have an aspiration to do that, I don't think anything should get in your way. I really think that having good people who care step up and run for elected office is what will help transform our world. Of representative of every ability, color, shape, size, what have you, we should all be represented in forms of government. So that's a little bit about me. I am a mom. I've got five children that range in age from 21 all the way down to five years old. I've been living in Albany for about 20 years and I can do the alphabet in sign language so I can say that my name is Alicia and it's nice to meet everybody. Awesome, thank you for that. Now, if anyone has any um, questions for Alicia, I will invite you to um, unmute yourself and go ahead and ask, ask your question. Okay, I'll give people some time to think and I will ask one of the questions sure. from the sample question list. So people in the community are beginning to look for jobs again after the pandemic and the unemployment rate for people with disabilities in the US is about 13%. If elected, how would you help alleviate the unemployment crisis or the employment crisis for people with disabilities? So we know that statistically speaking, people with disabilities are more than twice as likely not to have jobs as people with abilities. And I think that is a terrible thing. Um, one of the things that's important to me, and I come at this with my journalism background, is I always want to know why. Why are people with disabilities not being employed? And that those answers are complex. They can range from uh, a lack of transportation to a lack of enforcement of the ADA. Screening processes can be a problem to people with disabilities who are who are thrust out of a job um, if they disclose their, their disability. So it's important that we understand why people are not being employed. And I'm going to keep my answer specific to the city of Albany, because on the on the larger scale, um, that's that's outside of my control. And I really want to focus on people who live in Albany. So first of all, I want to say it is a very complex issue and it's important that we understand why so as a once just say we, we've done that um, maybe some of the reasons are there aren't there's not an awareness of the type of careers available or people need some ongoing education on how to perform well in a career that they desire um, so i think that one of the things a city needs to do is they need to have clear goals in place and that they're held accountable for their efforts and the promises that they make um, whether on the campaign trail or other but intra-agency cooperation is something that I was thinking about. I had a talk earlier with Shamika and she gave me actually a perfect example of how to verbalize this. So 
I'm going to steal from Shamika for a minute, transportation, housing, and employment. Okay, so those are three agencies, if you will, in the city of Albany that cannot exist in a vacuum and must have cohesion, cohesion between them, cooperation, so that when we have somebody who's having a transportation issue, that may not be the only issue. Maybe now it's an accessibility issue and they can't get to their workplace. And so um, there's got to be, and I don't know that there is in the city of Albany from anything I've researched so far, um, where agencies work together to facilitate a person with a disability being able to have employment. And if there's discrimination on the other side, that needs to absolutely be flushed out as well. And I think it does exist. I do think discrimination does exist, even though it's unpopular and it's been legislated. Um, I think that it is important to uncover from people who have tried to apply for a job. So not approaching it from an agency level, but talking to people and saying, you know, what, what have been your barriers? And then going after those barriers specifically, I never wanna legislate or attack, attach, uh, attack something from the top and assume that I understand why somebody is being affected because of their disability. I really want to hear from people what are they seeing? What are they experiencing? What reasons were they given? And then we can come there and say, let's talk about the solutions to the problem. People, people are my platform as a mayoral candidate. And you're going to hear that over and over again. Um, people have not been heard. And I think the best way to attack a problem is to harness the power of the people. Awesome. Thank you so much. We have a question in the chat. Um, it says, Back in the 1990s, when I worked for the Center for Independence, one of the most frequent calls I got was this. I just became disabled and I need to find an accessible and affordable apartment now. The demand for accessible apartments outstrips the supply by far in this old city. What strategies will you employ to remedy this? Um, and then it goes on to say, also Atlanta and Austin are going further and require new construction of private homes to be adaptable and visible. That is a policy that should be adopted everywhere. What action will you take to make this happen? So I completely agree with you that a there needs to be something in place that ensures accessibility to affordable housing to people with disabilities. Um, and again, I don't wanna presume what someone may or may not want. And I do know that there are areas in Albany where you could live in a you could live an apartment life, for example, um, if if that's something that you would want. However, I think that there are also I know that there are also people who would like a single family home, a detached dwelling, and oftentimes those are not constructed for people with disabilities. Uh, maybe it's difficult to modify them, um, but I think that part of construction. So so to use the example from um, Atlanta and in Austin. Yes, I do agree that modification, building something with the potential of a disabled person living there in mind, making that um, able to be modified easily should absolutely be something the city has um, precedence for because multiple studies have shown that when we make um, accessibility to a home, um, the standard or even accessibility to the street or whatever, it becomes actually, it fits a universal need, almost like the need we didn't know we had. And so, so that's one aspect. Yes, I do support what's going on, uh, what happened in Atlanta um, and the other city, I think it was Austin. Um, so let's, let's talk about affordability. Affordability um, across all levels, whether you've got you know, more money and you're disabled or you don't have as much money and you need some services, um, I support having, which the city doesn't have, there's, there's a scattered effect in the city of Albany of what's available and how to access it easily. There isn't a centralized place or even a person in charge who's, who you can get to, to say, here's what's available in Albany. Here are landlords in, in your area who have accessible home, who already have, they're already accessible. Um, here are some housing um, options. If you are somebody who, you know, prefers to live alone, um, if you're able to, or you need to have, you know, access to get to these facilities that are maybe closer to where you want to live, 
there isn't anything really in place to help somebody do that. Um, nobody ever knows who to call and there isn't um, a, a clear path to that. And so having somebody in place is going to be huge. That's gonna be one of the major steps here, but also making it affordable. There are homes in Albany that are affordable but they're not affordable maybe for somebody who needs it modified for a disabled person. But I've talking to a, talk, spoken to a number of landlords um, and people who own housing units uh, who are not only not against doing something like that, but they're very much for doing things like that and, and opening their homes and modifying their homes or making them able to be modified that is here available in the city of Albany, but does the average person know about it or know how to access it? No, and that's a huge gap in the city of Albany um, across the board. But when you talk about disabled, it's, it's an even smaller group and it often gets overlooked. And so anyway, all that to say, I, I completely support that. And there's a lot of work to be done there. And I think that it can be done. I don't think it's an impossible task. I just think somebody needs to come along and ensure that that's what happens. Thank you so much. Um, I see that Colette has her hand up, but Megan, um, your hand, or you've been unmuted for a while. So if you have a question, I'll let you go first and then we can pass it off to Colette. Great. Thanks, Helen. Um, so, um, hi, thanks for being here. I wanted to ask um, basically about uh, complete streets. I know that there are concerns from different um, parts of the disability community be about making sure that the city of Albany keeps sidewalks accessible, that curb cuts are not just there, but maintained. Um, and also uh, as someone who's blind, Albany has some what we call accessible pedestrian signals, which is the um, audible uh, noise at some intersections you hear downtown um, to let people know when it's safe to cross the street and there's certain types of intersections where that's necessary, but they're not maintained and the city's not always <laughs> uh, very responsive to the community when those requests are made. And so I'm interested in hearing about um, your commitment and prioritization of these types of issues. You know, snow removal is another big one for people with mobility impairments. Um, uh, in the winter months um, and just making sure that, you know, the disability community kind of has a voice um, with the city with these issues. Um, okay. So. okay, so so if I forget to address any one of those questions, please feel free to remind me. Um, okay. So I'm a, my family and I are walking people. We love to walk around the city of Albany and ride our bikes and I'm a runner, um, curb cuts, matter. <laughs> and so what I was saying earlier still applies that when you modify something, it's, it's called the curb cut effect, actually, when you modify something for somebody who's disabled, it becomes a universal benefit to everybody in the city. Mm -hmm. So, so curb cuts, for example, I'll just, I'll just use that as a small example. Um, snow removal. Yes, absolutely an issue. And I want to say, it's not just an issue in the disabled community. That's actually a citywide issue that a lot of people struggle with. It comes up a lot when I'm talking to people um, and the unresponsiveness of the city. Some of the, and, and maintaining a, a curb cut, for example, or, or even um, retrofitting one, that's not an impossible task. And it's not an expensive task, by the way, to, to cut out a curb and make it uh, more accessible, but, and keeping them clear. Some of that falls on the shoulders of DGS, for example, that's a whole different ball of wax. And that is, that's definitely an issue. People want to know, and I'm not criticizing DGS at all. They've got their own thing going on, but people want to know where are they? People say, move, you know, move the snow removal to the department of transportation, get it out of the hands of DGS. So there's a whole, there's a whole different argument over there, but I'm agreeing with you that work needs to be done. And it is a priority to me. I live in the city of Albany. I walk down the streets. I've tripped over the snow, um, garbage on the curb cuts you know, people parking in front of them. Those are definitely issues. And some of that is the um, sort of the overlooking of the everyday livability that we all, we all want to have in our city and you should have. And so livability is actually one of my platforms uh, as I'm campaigning for mayor. Livability comes up all 
the time and it's these things. When I ask people, I say, look, it's not petty for you to want to not trip over garbage at a curb cut or broken glass. Um, these are things that, that give the city a shabby appearance on top of being dangerous or preventative, even to someone with disabilities, um, to having a, a, being able to cross the street and not step in a pile of glass or garbage or whatever that might be. Yes, those, those are issues. And as a mayor, one of the major things that I plan to come after is, is this livability. So these things that, that come up that seem small, they're not, they become huge, like a pebble in your shoe. Eventually you're going to, it's going to affect your ability to walk. And so a, a very good question and a universal one. And absolutely one of the things that I'll be tackling is these are these livability things and curb cuts were already on my hit parade <laughs> um, as was snow removal. Um, and one more thing I wanted to address that you, that you asked was the, um, the lack of ability to access, uh, Shamika had maybe brought this up on the side earlier, comes up all the time, the lack of ability to access City Hall and to get a response about any issue that, that you raise. I cannot tell you how many people, I would say 88% of people that I talk to have tried actually to reach out to City Hall and access the mayor's office uh, or any city services about these issues and they get no response. That matters. One of the things, and I and I call that accountability. So I, I, my platform is the ALT, all is an alternative platform. It's accountability, livability, and transparency. So under accountability, holding the city, and, and I'm, if I may, or I apply the same thing to myself, holding the city accountable to the taxpayers, to the residents that live in the city and saying, why can't I get in touch with you about these things? And now, now nothing's being done. So one of the things that I will be doing, should I be elected mayor, is I wanna create um, a, a force of people that I call them boots on the ground or street soldiers, You know, people who go around and it is their job as city employees to understand maybe their neighborhood by neighborhood or ward by ward, people who it is their job to know what is going on in their community and their neighborhood and to address these things directly with people and it will be their job to make sure that they get in touch with the right agency they follow through did this get fixed for you did you did you find that somebody showed up and and cleaned this up did you know whatever that might be that does not exist in the city of albany and i can't find anywhere that it ever has existed and so that's a really novel approach for me as my uh, brand here as the people's mayor is to make sure that there are the ev people's everyday livability is addressed not by a phone tree not by a secretary but by a human being whose job it is to ensure that livability is addressed neighborhood by neighborhood in the city of albany i hope that answers all your questions thank you yeah mostly it does the only other aspect of complete streets i mentioned were the accessible pedestrian signals okay. and making sure that the city maintains them because they have some that are like dying <laughs> i do know uh, and then others that really need to be installed but um you know and you did talk about the lack of responsiveness um from yeah, the city so but that's is, related is yeah. in the city about maintaining anything is a problem and that would that would fall under it too one of the yeah. things we all struggle with is this this shabby unkempt sort of reputation we have in the city of all <laughs> being junky you guys and so <laughs> yeah so so when you when you talk about things like that um first of all putting a an actual human being in place whose job it is to address those and to say okay so we just got a call about this you know these are these <laughs> these vocal vocalized uh, crossing signals are dying or warbled or whatever that is um that there's a human being in charge of that for sure and that there are people who are sent out to do their jobs that they get paid for to make sure these are not complex issues, but they're not getting addressed. And so, yeah, so that's that really does fall under the maintenance of the city. I, there are people in the South End and all they want is a light bulb. And they've been asking for three years for a light bulb. That, that matters. And so, yes, there needs to be a leader in place who is gonna accomplish these things. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I'm going to um, pass it off now to Colette. Um, Donna Jean, if you want to unmute to, to relay the question, that'd be awesome. Yeah, let me just find her screen one second. Hi. 
Um, Helen, can you actually pin her so I can see her better for yeah. me? Thank you. Gonna add to the spotlight. There we go. Thank you. Hi there. My name's Colette Steves, and and I'm a representative of Albany area here. And I work with Empire State Agency for the Deaf. And I just kind of want to explain you. Know, I, I I did kind of type some of the information in the chat box, but but I could let you read that. But I guess I can repeat what I typed. That's no problem. So you know, some things I I'm not sure if people are aware of what you've talked about or not, or what. I just want to talk about the challenges and the frustrations that we've had in our community. And, you know, there's physical interviews and um, different, you know, televised things. Um, just like right now we're on Zoom. There's lots of different platforms that people can use. There's captioning, accessibility that we have. And sometimes we don't have that. And that's obviously an issue for access for us. And I was wondering what your views on that is for interpreters and captioning purposes. Also, um, I really think it would be useful for people, um, you know, if there's workshops or trainings on Zoom, that way they can just have, that way the communication just, you know, it's, it's accessible for everybody. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to get at, is that clear? Um, it is. Do you, are you referring specifically to city hall that that accessibility in terms of things that a, a mayor would be responsible for? Or are you? I, I'm not sure if you're talking about in the larger sense. Um, what, are you talking about a mayoral press conference, for example, having an interpreter at a mayoral press conference, um, or whenever we go out and do something representative of the city, that there's somebody there who can who can facilitate communication between the deaf community and the hearing community. Yes, exactly. So yeah, one of the things I have noticed, so I have several deaf relatives, which is why I have a little tiny bit of sign language. Um, and that has come up many times. And I so when you have that in your life, you start to see through a different set of eyes and I have noticed when um, there are certain events, especially if there are events that crop up like a response to something um, in the moment, maybe it's even a shooting or a crime, um, there is that lack of communication. Again, facilitating communication between the city and the average individual of, of all abilities is a big deal and a huge gap in the city of Albany. And so I, I completely advocate for having somebody there. Now, we can't obviously accommodate every language on earth at a, at a press conference and, and have 35 interpreters at a press conference. But we know that our city, first of all, is predominantly filled with English speakers. And so, and so that's okay. But secondarily to that, a large community of hearing impaired or deaf people, um, closed captioning may or may not be available in the moment. Uh, but certainly an ASL interpreter, I think it should be standard to anything that the city is doing. One thing I will say is that when um, you are on the spot and you have to give a statement, like I said, the closed captioning may or may not be available but so in that moment. But there are ways to engineer that. There are also ways to use platforms that accommodate that. So I'll give you an example one of my complaints that the mayor's office does is that they have removed from the people um, accessibility under the first amendment, the people's press and the right to free speech. And so what, what the mayor's office has done is they have bypassed public access television and they broadcast press, uh, pressers, um, conferences, statements from Facebook Live which can be hard for captioning, YouTube, which can be hard for captioning, um, especially if they don't have an ASL um, interpreter present on the spot. Um, 
but public access allows you to have um, a, an engineered later more accurate form of closed captioning so that you're not stuck with YouTube, which we all know our Facebook mixes up words and says wonky things. Um, and those little those little tweaks to um, approaching the people from a leadership standpoint are they seem little but they're actually huge in conveying information in being able to provide uh, services to people to letting people understand what exactly is happening especially in times of pain trouble turmoil um, confusion so as I said at the top, what I don't want to do is assume that I know what somebody needs. I hate when people do that to me. And what I would love to be able to do as mayor, and this, this applies to every citizen who has a concern, not just the disabled, but certainly and, and definitely the disabled community, is, is bring people into the discussion who are affected by these things or the lack thereof and say, what would greatly expand your ability to feel like you are included in the things that the city does? And if you say, look, as a representative or advocate, these are issues that need to be addressed for us right from the top, then that's what I wanna hear. Rather than assuming I know that you want or need something that I have no experience with. Thank you so much, Alicia. Um, we, I do want to give um, Valerie enough time to, to present, so I'll let you do a, um, a quick closing and then we'll pass it off to okay. Valerie. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, in my closing Mirox, I do want to tell you my platform is a mayoral candidate in the city of Albany. I've called myself the people's mayor because what I'm saying earlier is that I really believe the transformation of the city of Albany will be, start by the power of the people, by empowering people, by bringing people into the discussion, by being accessible to people. And so the three prong approach is livability, transparency, and accountability that will be the building blocks of how we turn Albany around. And I want you to know, there's no concern too petty. There isn't anything too small that City Hall should not be made aware of and should care about. It's important to me. And because um, on a human being level, um, you should have a leader that cares about your experience in this city. That's really a mayor's job. It's not to have press conferences. It's to care about what you go through day to day, regardless of circumstance, color, wealth, um, economic status, or any other factor. And so I hope that when you guys um, are exploring candidates, that that's something that you take a look at because your everyday livability in the city matters. Thank you so much, Alicia, for being here. Thank you guys. Today. Thank you so much for your time. Of course, and now I'm going to pass it off to Valerie. Just gotta find her on here to give her a quick spotlight. Awesome, thank you so much for being here, Valerie. I'll let you give a um, brief introduction of yourself and then we will get into questions. Oh, you are muted. Okay, can you hear me? Oops. Yeah. Okay, my name is Valerie Faust. I'm an African American. My hair is brown and curly and shoulder length. I am five feet four and I weigh about a hundred and mm, pounds. <laughs> so uh, I just, uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm a candidate for the, uh, being the mayor because, and, and I'm a preacher uh, uh, by profession has have been so for many, many years, and I talk a lot. So I have my notes here so I can stay on point. So um, I uh, got into the mayor race because this is my third time. And uh, each time I got in, the first two times was just to make a statement, but each time was because I didn't like what was going on in the city. I didn't think it was being fair to everyone. I didn't think that they were doing all that they could do to include the community in decisions. And I didn't think that they were forward thinking. I didn't think that they were, uh, had any more in them to help us to rise, this city to rise. And so I thought about 
uh, getting in this time, the third time, on a very serious note, and it because things has gotten worse. And talking about disability, uh, when I ran uh, uh, eight years ago or so, that was a big problem because as an advocate in the city of Albany, I have marched with with the community, the disability community, and held up signs over the years, early years, be, uh, asking for more sidewalks, asking for transportation to be more accessible. So now I'm here 10 years, eight to 10 years later, and we still have the same problem. So I'm hoping that as mayor of Albany, uh, that I will be able to make some changes that I believe we all know we need now. We are in, a di in dire straits, the city. Uh, we are sad, we are not uh, happy about the way things are going and we need a change. And that's my slogan, time for change. And um, I'm a mother of four. I just became a recent widow. My husband passed from um, lung, cancer, stage four lung cancer last year. I lost my daughter last month to open heart surgery that didn't go well. And my mother passed away a couple of days ago. And so uh, some people thought that they should be feeling sorry for me, but as a minister and as a advocate who has lived to tell people they can make it through their hardships and that uh, never to give up and hold on and, and share and be around people who love you, who support you and, and never stop, uh, take a rest, but don't stop and, and go forward. So I think that's indicative of being a tough person a responsible person um, and uh, empathetic person in my life that I want to want to pass that on through my candidacy. And uh, should God bless me to be the mayor and people vote for me, I want to bring that attitude to City Hall. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us today, especially with everything that, um, that's been going on. So, one of the questions in the chat says, the New York State Legislature has tried over the past three to four years to adopt a visit, visitability tax credit, which was vetoed by Governor Cuomo. This would have provided homeowners and landlords up to $2,700 about in tax credit to make their homes more accessible. If mayor, um, if mayor, would you be in support of such legislation in the city of Albany? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, you know, the disability community is really not respected uh, by people. Um, many of, of you have become invisible to the average person, you know, I've seen people come through and, and walk past and almost push a wheelchair out of the way to get to, to get through. So uh, yes, um, excuse me, someone just came in and distracted me. Can you uh, go over the, the back end of that? Is it how it was? Yeah, the, so it seems like um, for the past year- Just the part of it, yeah. Yeah, so it says, um, a tax credit of up to about $2,700 would be given to homeowners and landlord or landlords to make their homes more accessible. And if mayor, would you be in support of such legislation in the city of Albany? Yeah, with, without a doubt. And, and, and not just that, other legislation that uh, people who are uh, builders and contractors who are building new property that there should be some laws in place. Common Council should be making some uh, laws that will say you have to keep disability uh, uh, needs in your building, in, in your uh, you know code enforcement. Yes, you have to have this because this apartment can be looked at by someone who, who is disabled, the home. So yes, um, but one of the things that I really think is, is, is necessary to do because your community and many other communities, uh, gay community and, and whatever that people don't think is, is, is the average or, or the norm, 
is not treated right. So one of the things I want to do, and, and it covers homes, it covers everything that people have mentioned about uh, uh, getting the broken sound at, at the corner, at the lamppost, uh, getting sidewalks that work, snow removal, and all of that will be dealt with because I would want to put Helen or Shamika or one of you in the office because this problem is so huge, no mayor or no one person can really deal with it. But to deal with it uh, and, to, and the various say, nuances of what you need and what the issues are, I would need you and you are uh, 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 someone who represents you right there in the office so that we can work on these things. And um, my three things is this, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And you know, and I know, in my congregation, I had two uh, young ladies, both were in wheelchairs, twins. Um, my mother was in a wheelchair before she passed. And so I've seen up front how uh, um, dis disabled people are disrespected. I see how when they had doctor's appointments, they uh, were mistreated by transportation. Uh, they were not coming to pick them up on time, not waiting to uh, their doctor's appointment or the appointment for over to give them an uh, adequate time to come back and pick them up. So yes, for housing, uh, um, for every, on your list, I read your list. And for uh, uh, getting into a store with a step, what are we going to do about that? Uh, are we going to have legislation that said, listen, we will help you, store owner, uh, business, restaurant owner, to get make it easier for handicapped people to get in and out of your place? And so, yes, um, I'm, go I'm, I'm covering a lot right now uh, because I've read your list. And, and so if I leave anything out, you guys can uh, um, help me. So, yeah. I want to fight for you. I have fought for you in the past, uh, uh, marching and, and doing what I need to do to lift my voice to say enough is enough. And we are people too. So diversity, all different people all, from all walks of life being included in anything and everything that goes on in this city and to make it easily available for them to participate. When you're talking about um, uh, being equitable, that why can't handicapped people be equal? So it's a lot of thinking that we have to change in the minds of people, but it happens like this. It happens like advocate, like Shamika, like Shamika and, and Helen, and a leadership that will listen and a leadership that cares and a leadership that says, um, I care about you, yeah, what's the problem? Let's get this done. What is my budget looking like? Because right now our budget it, to me is spent frivolously on things that don't benefit a whole lot of people. And so um, I will do whatever I can as mayor to work closely with your community to get the things done that you need done so that you can feel like you're included, that you can feel like uh, in the, uh, you're among the diverse people and, and situations that are going on in our community, that you will also feel respected and that you will feel helped. Thank you so much. I'm going to go to one of the questions in the chat and if anyone um, from the audience has a question they want to ask live, um, feel free to raise your hand or um, after the next answer, I will ask people to unmute themselves. So it says people with disabilities have continued to grow as a share of the electorate. How have you reached out to the how have you reached out to the disability community and how have your experiences during the pandemic changed your policies on disabilities? How will it or how did it? How will uh -huh. it? Yeah, it says, how have your experiences during the pandemic changed your policies or views on um, disabilities? Well, 
you know, the pandemic changed all of our lives. And um, so as, as a person who is a reverend and have helped people and have been an advocate for many years, my heart goes out to uh, the, the disabled community because it, it just was so bad for all of us. It changed our lives. It changed the way we, the way we uh, share. You know, it changed the way we played, the way we, the way we uh, go out, and the way we were with each other, the way we worship. It changed a lot of things. And so, uh, yes, yes, we. My mind, my heart was very sensitive towards the extra trouble that many disabled people had. And remember, I have uh, people in my uh, life that was suffering, uh, getting food. They couldn't get out there to get to all those food places uh, um, that they were giving out food. And, and a lot of handicapped people couldn't get there. Some people called me, said, would you, would you pick it up for me and bring it to my house? And, and, um, and no one made it easier for, for that to happen that I know of. And, and then the other thing was a lot of um, handicapped people that were around me and those who weren't, but that I heard stories about uh, were sick. Some of them didn't have COVID, but they had gotten sick um, during the pandemic and didn't have anyone to really be there for them to get them to the hospital, to get them to, uh, where they needed to go to get their health together. So yeah, I would be able to, I would want to make sure that in any crisis that all people are able to get the help that they need, the assistance that they need. And as mayor, uh, uh, I'm, I will take, I, I'm, I'm what, what you see is who I am. I'm not a phony, I'm transparent. I, I believe in and people are uh, taking being accountable for the actions. And so as mayor, uh, seeing these things firsthand, I would still want Shamika or Helen in there to, and this is for real too, to uh, um, keep some of these things from happening. Because as sure as we live, there will be other crises that come and, and that will affect all of us, but mainly uh, greatly affect those who are disabled. Uh, even even when there aren't crises, the uh, your community suffer in many ways, like the things that we are talking about, simple things that can be fixed that the administration don't seem to care about fixing for you. Um, so, yes, my answer is yes to that, and I would do all I could to to alleviate uh, uh, this, the issue and to make sure that as uh, the word that. Um, Alicia used the livability, increase the livability, the quality of life for not only you guys, but mainly, primarily for you guys, because uh, uh, you're on the top of the list. You're on the top of the list. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to give um, people the opportunity. I think we've got time for about one more question. If anyone um, in our audience has a question, please feel free to unmute yourself. And if not, I know someone who, who does have a question, I can ask him personally to unmute. So people there. Okay. Um, I'll invite Zach to unmute and ask his question live. Hi. Um, Hi, Zach. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, my other question was a follow up to the question about uh, homeowners and landlords and the tax credits to make their homes accessibility or accessible. Speaking of uh, housing, um, landlords can set, can, can set the rent requirement as high or as low as they want. An example of this would be if the income or if the rent is $1,500 a month, the person applying for that apartment has to make 40 to 50 times the rent to get accepted. Um, a lot of people have not even low income jobs, but jobs that are below the threshold that landlords are looking for. You would have to make 
fifty-five dollars to $65,000 a year to qualify for an apartment with a rent of fifteen dollars to $1,600 a month. Um, you support the idea of setting a standard income requirement so that it doesn't discriminate against the bottom line or people making below that threshold. Well, you know, that should have been done already. You shouldn't even need to ask that question. Uh, Albany has handicapped people who are citizens here. And um, we hear them talking about um, others. I'm complaining. Others are complaining, but they're not really doing anything for any of us to really get affordable, decent, safe apartments. And so what we have to do is get together. And again, the Common Council has to get, get on the ball and uh, because I'm sure they, got, they have a lot of constituents in their wards who are handicapped and, and make legislation, we can change things. A lot of these things are so easy to change, to make new rules, to make come up with new uh, requirements, to make uh, uh, housing accessible uh, to uh, all of us actually, but mainly to those who have extra issues to have decent housing. And so I think uh, above all, yes, because homelessness is at its highest rate here in Albany. And a lot of people are homeless because they can't afford to be in homes and, uh, or to have a decent apartment. Um, a lot of them are living in assisted living places when they really are capable of having their own place, but they can't afford it. So yes, we need to do something about that. And I think that's doable. I think that, um, uh, um, just like the present administration can give um, uh, uh, millions of dollars and in, in incentives to rich builders to build these big old buildings and whatnot. I think that each one of these uh, apartment buildings that are coming up, it should be mandatory that they have X amount of apartments in that building for handicapped people at affordable rates. And sure. that can be done. And so uh, that's where I'm at on it. And you know, don't get me on my preaching stump because <laughs> these things upset me, you know, that that uh, we are treated differently, that, that there is a little respect for the handicap and, and how people still think funny. Um, my, the people that were in my church, people laughed at them and, and, and smirked and whatnot. So, so the community is not only going through practical needs, like being able to get around the city, being able to have a decent, affordable, handicap accessible living quarters, uh, um, being able to cross the street safely, being able to get out of your house during snow time. Why can't we prioritize uh, um, doing snow removal in the handicapped community. Why can't we do that? That's something that's easy to do. And so, yeah, um, I'm, I would fight for you as I would fight for every citizen here. Uh, I, um, I, I, don't, I hate using the term, but many of us are the underdog. We need, we need change and we need someone in city hall who see that and who want to, I call, I, I say this, uh, if I become mayor, city hall is gonna be called uh, co the community city hall because the door is gonna be open and a, a system is gonna be set up where people's concerns are going to be answered. There will be a diversity of people that I'll have around me uh, um, from different communities uh, uh, to who knows what's going on in the community. Keep me abreast of it. Sit down with me and say, what can we do about this? How soon can we get this done? Yeah, yeah, I'm a fighter. And I don't like people, anybody, uh, uh, having a foot put on them and being overlooked. And as I said in my three words, uh, not a part of equity, not a part of diversity, not a part of inclusion. It's got to stop. And that's the type of city hall I want to run. And yes, Zachary, I would be in there punching out <laughs> to get uh, things done for uh, the disabled community, whatever I can do. Thank Based you. On what you guys uh, uh, inform me about, we discuss and we make a plan and make it happen.
Thank you so much, Valerie. I really appreciate I really appreciate you being here today. Um, and to be respectful of everyone's time, I'm going to have to ask you to stop there. So, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And from my heart to yours, we need a change. Thank you. And bye bye. I know that I started this session by saying, despite multiple um, outreaches and attempts to accommodate incumbent mayor Kathy Sheehan um, would not be joining us. I did, um, while we were having our um, forum today, I did receive an email from her office and she provided a statement. So I'm going to read the statement that was provided from um, Mayor Sheehan. It says here, the city of Albany is dedicated to ensuring that it is a community that upholds human rights and is equitable and inclusive to all of its residents and visitors alike. This includes people with disabilities, seen or unseen, recent or lifelong, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, or creed. As such, we are committed to examining how the city can continue to support people with disabilities, amplify their voices and experiences, and make Albany a city that is accessible to all. The city of Albany is a city with over 400 years of history. And with that comes historic infrastructure, making modern solutions to accessibility a challenge. However, we are committed to confronting these challenges. The city's chief diversity officer has met with disability rights in the past to discuss opportunities for partnership. And I look forward to continuing these conversations and conversations and working together. Most recently in fall of 2020, I conducted an assessment of the city's Americans with Disabilities Act program, reviewing the city's current practices, the ADA's regulation and best practices recommendations and identifying areas for improvement. We are reviewing our ADA transition plan for updates and modern solutions to ensuring that our streets, playgrounds, places to recreate and buildings are not only accessible, but also inclusive. In winter 2020-2021, the city of Albany also unveiled a pilot program designed to proactively remove snow from ADA compliant access ramps at intersections and the sidewalks in the immediate vicinity to help ensure the safe travel for all of our residents, especially after snow and ice events that are common in the Northeast. I'm also committed to upholding disability rights within the city's workforce, ensuring that we have a robust, reasonable accommodation process, providing disability awareness in our training and advocating for workplaces that are respectful and free of harassment or discrimination towards our employees, constituents, and guests with disabilities. And that is the statement that was provided from Mayor Sheehan. Um, so I want to end by thanking all of our candidates who attended today. And as a reminder, um, the primary election will be held on June 22nd. You can vote early from June 13th to June 20th. And if you're not already registered, you have until tomorrow to register to vote. Um, so if you have any questions or you'd like to register to vote, you can call Disability Rights New York or the Albany County Board of Elections office. Um, I will put my contact in the chat below, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today.